Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market update for uh, Monday, January 27, 2020. Uh, so we'll start out here with the futures. We had uh, some nice follow through to Friday sell signals. Uh, Friday morning on rightsideofthechart.com, I had posted uh, that sell signals triggered on the U.S. market, and we were at support. I mentioned at the time uh, those sell signals were this trend line I've been waiting to uh, for a solid break and 60-minute close, and that's what we got. We broke down on Friday. There's one candle, went down, came back on the line, and then boom, there was your solid 60-minute close. Like I said, we hit support, and uh, on Friday I said next sell signal to come on a break below that 90. 91.10, 91.11 level, and that came in the uh, a gap down in the futures overnight. Remember, the futures trade virtually around the clock, but they do shut down on Friday, and they pick back up on uh, Sunday evening, and so that's it. So there was your sell signal. Uh, well, the sell signal came then. Next sell signal or break of support came on 91.10. We went right down to the, these are all the levels I've had for a while now on this chart, right down to that 90.22 level and had the typical, what I call, reaction on the initial tag. A reaction I define as either a consolidation or a bounce. That's a reaction when you're coming down hard like that and all of a sudden you hit the brakes and you move around. Uh, and, you know, you you a lot of volatility. Volatility has expanded too, so keep that in mind with these uh, support resistance levels, these price targets. You're going to see these candles chopped through, but uh, if you really zoom in closely, which we'll do here, you can see that uh, most of those, uh, the closing candlestick, uh, you know, the body is close right on or above that uh, 92, 90, 22, 50 ish support. Remember, NQ trades in quarter point increments. Uh, this program doesn't snap to the nearest quarter point, so you get a round off there. And then uh, we, we broke that support, and this is how it works come down, you know, take out one support, hit the next target. Uh, which is a support level, dance on it when that goes, which it did there, you finally go, nice solid 60 minute close right there, boom, right down to the next support. And that's where we opened today and we traded all day sideways. So, and I said this morning, you know, I did a video for subscribers earlier today, we had, this was the morning candle right here, I believe, uh, somewhere in there. We spiked down, I'll get to QQQ in a second, and pretty much traded right on there all day. I expected a, a little bounce. I figured we'd bounce up here to about 90, 22, 50, and I still think we get that probably in the after hour session all the way up to possibly here. But here's the thing, guys. I remember Apple reports tomorrow, they kick off the... Uh, to me, what's just the most important thing, the earnings for the five market-leading FANG stocks, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, uh, Microsoft, and Alphabet, which is the G, is an uh, Alphabet is Google's parent company. So they, uh, again, Apple kicks it off tomorrow night. I don't expect any big fireworks on, on this. Uh, as I said today, it's just one other uh, on a long string of, of um, you know, uh, examples where the news tends to either uh, coincide with or follow the charts. You know, we broke down first. Uh, you know, the um, you know the 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 virus, uh, the Chinese virus, is it's not anything new. That was not a new development. It's 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 not getting any better. That was a trend before, but all of a sudden, this is where the markets start to worry about it. And so the you know the press will slap that on as a headline. And look, it is legitimate. I'm not saying that it's not. A concern, but like I said earlier in the video today, you know how many times in the past have we seen the scare from SARS, the, you know Asian swine flu, and all these other things, and you know it gets you know it gets uh, gets people worrying, and but that's how technicals and fundamentals align. This was a market that needed to correct. It was extremely overbought, and it was working up a very well-defined uh, price channel. Uh, in which uh, a break of that price channel was likely to trigger a sell signal, and that's what we got. So there was your heads up Friday, and this is what the market does, when, especially when you have a very one-sided trade. Um, what it likes to do, and I've said this quite often, when you have these extreme trades, whether it's extreme bearishness in a, in a strong downtrend that's been going on for a while, or extreme bullishness in an uptrend like this, you get the bulls get complacent, Shorts are squeezed out. Um, they're waiting for their opportunity. If they, they happen to get it on Friday, it was a little questionable, yes, because we do have the FANG earnings coming up. All of this is still questionable. You know, It depends on how which way earnings go. But uh, what I was getting at is this is what the market does. It tends to, to start gapping down. And what that does, it denies objective exits from longs. In other words, I covered this in the video today. If you were a long, if you were long NQ, and you said, okay, well, okay, Randy, I agree with you. That 91.10 is a, a you know a pretty decent support level. So I'm going to put my stop there at uh, let's say 90, 
9108, 9107, something just below, get a little bit of room. Well, what happens is uh, stop will be filled. A stop loss order gets filled at the open. And QQQ, it's even a little worse. I'll show you that in a second. They get bypassed. You don't get filled at 9107. The only order that would get filled there is if you had a stop limit that says fill me at 9107, but no lower. You can fill me at better. That's what a stop limit says. I can be. You can be filled at 9107 or higher. But the problem is if you if the market or the security, whatever you're trading, individual stock, if it gaps past a stop limit order, that stop limit is unfilled. And so what happens is you continue to bleed, your losses grow. So your stop loss order did absolutely, your stop limit did absolutely nothing for you. And then of course, the problem with a stop loss, I talked about that in the video today, is that uh, stop loss orders are converted to a market order once the stop price is triggered. So let's say you went home over the weekend and uh, you were long trying to protect profits, um, and you had a stop let's just say let's just say you placed it below friday's close because here's friday's close right there that yellow line there's friday's close and this is a i jumped over to a one minute chart by the way uh so you put a stop there but what happened is you get the worst fill of the day because stop loss orders are converted into market orders once the stop price is triggered so as you know, once you exceeded that whatever that level was all those orders and that's why you have the big surge of volume in the open and the big dip and I said it in the video early today that would probably be the low of the day and it was and I said we have to then basically we're locked in this sideways range and so my analysis right now is the same what it was earlier uh, you know break above here uh, would likely give us a little bit of rally spark a rally and a downside break would be bearish uh, I don't expect a big move up or a big move down again until at least Wednesday because like I said Apple's reporting tomorrow night who wants to take a big position right in front of that earnings but I'll, I'll be clear let me be clear the charts were and still are clearly bearish leading up to all these uh, things that are about to report and on on top of that so there's a breakdown by the way in QQQ I know I'm jumping all over the place but this is 60 minute chart there was your sell signal on Friday right there impulsive move down and then there's a point right there we close there and you gap down all the way down here so you had over two and a half about a two and a quarter percent drop uh, at the open and um, so that's what I mean by denying longs an objective entry or exit out of their positions and also denying shorts an objective entry you know who wants to chase and I you know a few people asked this morning I said it no it's not I don't think it's objective to short at this point because we're probably going to get a bounce first you know we hit that these are all the levels that we're here in advance you can see you know the technicals are working people focus on them we just bypass this one we gap beyond it so the next support is at two seven was at two seventeen seventy and you can look where we hit this is again that line has not been modified in at least a week and you can see the the candlestick body right there we closed right on it look at the candlestick uh, shadow right there another shadow on it and another shadow so you know other than the opening order imbalances I talked about that today as well earlier when you have a cluster of orders uh, and all the orders and in, in this case were sell orders because you had all those stop loss orders getting hit you had the latecomer shorts that wanted to short at the open when they saw the big move down and so you have a lot more sell orders than buy orders and so you got to be careful of that and uh, and uh, not you know that's not the most objective time to short uh, right there because if you did like I said you went underwater a little bit but I still think we had lower based on everything we've seen so let's wrap up by looking at a few more charts there's another clean version of QQQ that price channel uh, that we broke down from on Friday in other words the most important line right there and that was the one I had yellow color coded yellow on the other chart there was your sell signal gap down right to the support there well, this, this chart this board I have it at 218 so very similar and uh, SPY as well, SPY hit uh, this uh, 323.80 target right there. And this is a little wonky after hours candle right there. Forget about that long shadow. Pretty much that, that's really an erroneous print right there. This is where we've traded all day right there. In that little range right around that 323.80 support. You can see it's pretty decent support there. Uh, I still think at minimum we're coming down here. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what Apple does and uh, some of the others. And then ES, for your ES traders, I had a 332.32 as the uh, support level. 
uh, heading into uh, last week, the end of last week, and that's where we hit right there. You can see uh, low was uh, 3233 uh versus my 32 32 38 which rounded up that's right there uh so almost a perfect tag of that support level it's really a support zone i have two lines in close proximity and um and that's where we're at uh so with all that being said what i think you know nothing but bearish price action on friday like i said a little bit questionable with the fangs reporting soon and still is a little bit questionable i have to say that because that could go either way but Today's price action being very impulsive, follow through only increases the the case for more downside by a, a pretty good factor, and uh, because that is you know what you want to see following a breakdown, impulsive selling, impulsive selling, and that's exactly what you got today. So we'll take a quick look at the fangs, F A A M G, and wrap this up. Let me go to Q Q Q. That will load a watch list uh, for me, and uh, let's see. Pull that watch list up for you. Okay, here's that watch list to the left in, in order of descending uh, market cap. Apple being the largest at 1.4 trillion. There's a market cap right there. Here's Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon. Uh, the Alphabet, the other share class is class A, and then Facebook. And so you have uh, four of them coming up this week, and one of them uh, next week on, I think it's February 3rd. Uh, here, we can even show you right here. Sort it this way, and you can see Apple tomorrow, uh, Starbucks, AMD tomorrow. All these are tomorrow. And then uh, you have Microsoft on Wednesday, all after the bell, the big ones. Microsoft, Facebook on Wednesday. You got Tesla coming up. So a lot lot going on this week, guys. And uh, like I said, and what I'll run through here real quick and show you is the charts to me uh, were clearly bearish leading up to this and uh, still are right now. So we'll see. Maybe uh, something happens that undoes the technicals, but I, I wouldn't put good odds on it. I think we have some more downside to come. Uh, let's just sort these this way and start out and show you Apple. Apple broke that price channel. Remember on Friday... We had a breakdown in QQQ. Spy had already broken down, you know, before that, several days before, and was back testing. But Apple had a comparable price channel and broke down on Friday, but it was a questionable. It wasn't a very impulsive, solid breakdown. So, you know, you know, I can't say that was the highest probability entry. Plus, you have earnings coming up. And as I said, the stock isn't going to go very far in either direction. Yeah, it was down 3% today. Yes, that's the biggest drop in a while. Uh, so I'm not trying to minimize it, but also, again, it's, you know, it's relative to the move it's had recently. This was dragged down in uh, sympathy. It's broad selling, you know, broad-based selling. I talked about that before. When the dam finally breaks, you get a rush for the exits. Everybody's long. Shorts have been squeezed out. And I'm metaphorically speaking, not everybody's long. Not all shorts are squeezed out, but I'm talking, you know, generally speaking. And that's what leads to these sharp drops because you don't have the short sellers in the market to come in and cover where they might normally say, okay, I shorted Apple here. I'm going to cover her at that first dip. When you cover, you're buying the cover. And so that's that's what creates these um, these moves. And we could see it again. You could have another gap down tomorrow. Well, once Apple's out of the way, like I said, there's not a lot in this chart that I see um, that's bullish. You know, we just put in the divergent high right here recently, right before the breakdown, hit that first support level. But I had that as a yellow line before, and it still is. The yellow lines are the most salient levels to me. This one was the first one to go. And that was our sell signal. 307 uh, is the next one. We danced on it all day, held above that level. And then it gets pretty thin from here. Uh, when I say thin, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. I'd like to use a volume of price histogram. And you can see the green and red bars. It shows where where a lot of uh, a lot of volume occurred at certain price levels. So instead of your regular volume down here, which just shows your volume, you know, on a time scale, day by day or hour by hour here, <laughs> because this is a 60 minute chart, this will show you how much buying went on. So a lot of people were trapped here in the volume price and they're still there. Then it starts to get thin. There's a little thin zone. It gets a lot thinner down to here. So uh, as I said before, uh, even a couple weeks ago, once we got the sell signal, I figured Apple's probably coming down here uh, at 279 level, and we have an uptrend line that comes in to intersect with it. And uh, so that would be uh, another roughly 9, better than 9%, let's say about another 10% downside in Apple. And if that happens, I 
about the only guarantee I'll give you is a mark. It's going to drop at least five, maybe 10%, possibly more somewhere in there, because again, Apple's one of the largest components. All right, next up, we'll do a few more and then we'll wrap it up here. Uh, Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft had a comparable price channel as well. Very well-defined uptrend line, broke down. Uh, gap down today, came in. Look at that, perfect back test. I have not modified this trend line, not moved it, kissed that trend line and started to roll over. But it also hits support. You can see these two lines together. There's a gap right there and, and a couple reactions on the bottom of the gap. So this is gap support. It held today and it works this way. That's your next sell signal for breaks. If we didn't have earnings season coming up right now, to me, this would be almost like all in, not all, when I say all in shorting ops, please don't take me, it doesn't mean all in your portfolio. I'm just saying a full position. I often talk about being long or short something, but I may take, like I did over the weekend, I told you guys I was taking home a starter short, um, and uh, which I can add to and still will throw throughout this week, depending on how these FANG earnings go. Uh, all right, so that's, that's the next level in Microsoft. Again, they're going to report, I think I said Wednesday, uh, but these these are your next targets down here. And I don't want to get too specific on the targets now. I'm going to make this a public video. Some of these may become official trade ideas. And if that's the case, then uh, they won't be covered. Uh, they'll be covered on the subscriber only videos. Uh, Alphabet. This is class A. This looks a little bear flaggish right here. Uh, you may not see the flagpole, but when you have a gap, that's essentially, you know, that is a drop. If I turn this into a line chart, the line would go like this. It would be all the way down. And uh, that is uh, typical of a, a bearish pennant continuation pattern. It's a close cousin of a bear flag. It's almost the same thing. It just takes the form of a pennant like that, a little triangle instead of a f upward sloping flag. That's your bear flag. And the measured target on a flag or a pennant is the distance of the flagpole. So this would tell me that would take Alphabet down to this target here, about uh, 1364 or whatever. And let's see where that would go. That would be that would be about a five, almost four and a half, five percent drop. Uh, to get it in line with Apple, we'd have to come down here more. And uh, and that's it. I won't go over each and every chart. Just uh, again, because I did. Uh, couple videos and quite a bit of coverage on the fangs lately and you know the story was the same that's the common theme you know it might sound like I'm beating a dead horse here but overbought conditions negative divergence and uh, in an uptrend I mean no mistake about it for weeks now we didn't have the sell signals until Friday and you can see these guys broke down and um, it's pretty clear you know they once they broke down they started moving lower 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 and uh, there's really not a lot of support on Facebook, you know, for a while here. So that's it. The, you know, both the equity markets, you know, via SPY, QQQ, the major indexes, as well as the market leading FANG stocks have bearish technical postures heading into earnings. And as I've said before, it's been my experience that much more often than not, and again, that's not all the time, that's not 100% of the time, but more often than not, if a chart pattern, a stock has a clearly bearish technical posture, regardless of the trend, I always say that, don't get a bullish trend confused with a bearish technical posture on a stock or vice versa. It's, it was a bullish trend and still is a bullish trend. You know, this bullish trend means uh, a security is making a series of higher highs and or that was higher lows higher highs and higher lows and that still is for this point in time however this is a bearish technical posture and we had a sell signal there in addition to that so um, you know if you're waiting for a confirmed downtrend well you're gonna have to Facebook's gonna have to drop 10 15 percent until at least the you know the intermediate term trend changes uh, but for now this is a really a you know early stage trend reversal for the near-term trend and and again I'm not going to spend much more time on this but if I zoom out to these daily and weekly charts I just want to continue to impress that everything I've been talking on for many months now over bought conditions that have become more overbought uh, negative divergence uh, things like that have continued to build so there's certainly the possibility um, this is QQQ on a daily broke below the trend line today and that's the trend line off uh, the early October lows October 3rd low right there it's a trend line I've been watching for quite a while so there's a sell signal now on the daily chart uh, so that's that's it guys it's uh, the bearish case has received a couple more check marks today after uh, you know getting a few last week so you know these little check boxes you know they're just many different things and uh, you know Friday we had a couple of those checked 
and we were waiting on a few more like a solid breakdown from Apple today like a breakdown here on the daily chart of QQQ and we got that so let's see what happens in the next few days and um, as these fangs report and see if that opens the door to maybe uh, a much much larger drop or do we just hit those near-term pullback targets that I was looking for here uh, for a while here on QQQ you know target zone about 216 down to about 211.42 all right, we'll wrap it up here and uh, pick this up tomorrow. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Have a great evening.